taken from the Ultimate Killer Collection, by Stuart Dandel. Gene Weber The Ogress Gene Weber was born on 7 October, 1874, in a small fishing village in northern France. When she was aged just 14, Weber left her home and headed for Paris, looking for a new start and a new life. This would be for the same reasons as all the other people that started migrating to the cities in the late 19th century. While in Paris, Jean worked various menial jobs until she got married in 1893. Sadly for Jean, her husband would turn out to be an alcoholic, and even worse, two of their three children died in 1905. By then, possibly to blot out the pain and heartache, Weber was also drinking heavily. She ended up residing in a seedy Paris tenement with her spouse and her seven-year-old son. Their life was far from comfortable. In 1905, on the 2nd of March, Jean Weber was babysitting for her sister-in-law when one of her two daughters suddenly fell ill, and died. The child in question was an 18-month-old named Georgette. Although there were no outward signs of illness, it wasn't unusual for children to die in this era, so the death was written off as natural causes. It does appear though, that strange bruises on the child's neck were ignored by the examining physician. Meanwhile, Jean Weber was welcomed back to babysit on the 11th of March, 1905. Sadly, this occasion would also be fraught with loss of life. A two-year-old girl named Suzanne, did not survive Weber's visit, but a doctor blamed the second death on unexplained convulsions. Yet again, no suspicions were raised. On the 25th of March, just two weeks later, Weber was babysitting for her brother when his daughter Germaine suffered a sudden attack of choking, complete with red marks on her throat. Germaine was a lucky girl and she managed to survive the episode, but she was a lot less fortunate the following day when Jean Weber returned. The child had another choking fit and subsequently died, she was just seven years old. A physician stated that diphtheria was the likely cause of death. Just four days later, Weber's son Marcel would fall victim to the illness that was killing the family's children. Once again however, the telltale marks of strangulation were ignored. On the 5th of April 1905, Weber invited two of her sisters-in-law to dinner, and then remained home with her 10-year-old nephew Morris, while the other women went out shopping. When her sisters-in-law returned earlier than expected, they found a panicked Morris desperately gasping on the bed, his neck was covered with intense bruising. Jean Weber meanwhile, was standing over him with a dazed and crazed expression on her face. The sisters prosecuted and charges were filed. On the 29th of January 1906, Jean Weber's trial opened. The prosecution alleged that Weber was guilty of as many as eight murders, all of the children had died while in Jeanne's care. It was also alleged that Weber had killed her son in March to throw suspicion off herself, a truly grave and selfish act if true. Weber however, was being defended by the brilliant defense lawyer Henri Robert and he spun the details to her favor, the jurors were reluctant to believe the worst about a grieving mother. On 6 February, 1906, Jean Weber was acquitted on all counts. On 7 April, 1907, 14 months after the trial, a physician from the town of Villedou was summoned to the home of a peasant named Bevoust. He was greeted at the door by a babysitter calling herself. Madame Lynette, who led him to the bed where a nine-year-old boy, Auguste Bevoust, already lay dead. His throat appeared to be terribly reddened and bruised. The cause of death was officially listed as convulsions. On the 4th of May however, the good doctor changed his opinion, when Madame Lynette, was actually identified as none other than, Jean Weber. Weber once again hired the lawyer Henri Robert. After being held on remand for trial, Jean Weber was released in December, after a second autopsy blamed the boy's death on typhoid. Yet again Jean was free to babysit for the families of France. 
Weber quickly did the wise thing and disappeared from sight, surfacing next as an orderly at a children's hospital in Falkombald, where there appears to have been little issue, before moving on to the children's home in Orchville. The children's home was run by friends of Weber, who sought to make up for the wrongs that justice has inflicted upon an innocent woman. Working under the name Maria Lemoyne, Weber had been on the job for less than a week when she was caught manually strangling a child in the home. Not wanting to lose face, the owners quietly dismissed her and the incident was hushed up. Jean Weber then headed back to Paris, where she was arrested for vagrancy and briefly confined to an asylum at Nanterre. Doctors there then diagnosed her as sane and set her free. Weber drifted into prostitution to make ends meet for a while, before picking up a common-law husband along the way. Nothing official ever came of it however. In 1908, on the 8th of May, the couple settled at an inn in Commercy. A little while later, Jean Weber was found strangling the innkeeper's son with a bloody handkerchief. It appears that she couldn't control herself. The father of the boy punched her three times in the face before she would release the lifeless body, such was the ferocity of her compulsion. On the 25th of October, 1908, held for trial yet again on murder charges, Jean Weber was officially declared insane. She was then sentenced to the asylum at Maryville. Weber survived two years in incarceration before manually strangling herself in 1910, ultimately bringing her madness full circle. As of writing, Jean Weber has had 10 murders of children attributed to her.